Once upon a time, in a galaxy far, far away, there was a horsepower war going on. Every nation from the colorful country of Japan to the land of opportunity called America were making cars that we had never expected to be built. We saw cars that we'll sadly have to tell our grandkids about one day, knowing that they'll never understand the true impact that those cars had, like the incredible danger and blistering speed seen in Group B rally racing in Europe, or the incredible street racing scene in Japan that led to all the big car manufacturers having to get together and make a gentleman's agreement to slow people down, and even the insane style of the American muscle car back in the 60s and 70s, putting motors with well over 400 horsepower in everything they possibly could, which most sports cars nowadays are just finally starting to catch up to over 50 years later. We have seen history built right before our very eyes, and while it's nice to talk about those legends, I think it's time we start to pay homage to the little guys who made that all possible. My name is Mark Roden, and this is what makes the Mazda Protege 5 so great. <laughs> Like I said before, back in the 90s, there was a horsepower war going on. Every car company was building cars that were more and more insane, and in order to keep their citizens safe, the higher-ups of the car companies in Japan came to an agreement that from there on out, their cars would not be allowed to surpass 276 horsepower. This was kind of a devastating blow to the JDM tuner craze of the 90s, since what happened was obviously most companies didn't listen and instead would bump the power numbers up after bringing their test cars to the dyno, which is why cars like the Mark IV Super was advertised as having 276 horsepower, but when taken to an actual dyno, it had 320 to the wheels. But the people didn't realize what was going on, and all they saw was the numbers that the company was advertising, which was always 276. And that kind of turned people off of them, especially when other countries were still going up and up and up. But then, something miraculous happened, friend. The American media finally covered the wonderful culture of Japanese street racing with the launch of the Fast and Furious and Need for Speed films and games. Every single American car guy who watched that movie or played that game in the early 2000s now had a newfound respect for cars that they've never before would have even considered, and one of those cars would be the wonderful Mazda Protégé. The Mazda Protege 5 is actually the ninth generation of a car called the Mazda Familia over in Japan, and this time it was a lot more sporty than previous models. Now obviously it was still nowhere near as fast as the big dogs like the GTR, Supra, RX-7, Evo SDI, NSX, or even the Silvia, but it was sporty and very cool looking, and that was enough to get the people talking about it. Previous models of the Protege sold pretty well in America, and before it was called the Protege, it was called the 323 over here, which once again sold pretty well. But before the Protege 5, they were all very boring to us car guys, and if they did make a cool model, we didn't get it in America. Just like literally every single other car from Japan that was super cool. But don't worry buddy, because that was about to change. <laughs> The wonderful Protege 5 was called the Protege 5 not because it had close to 5,000 horsepower, but actually because the car has five doors. You see, the regular sedan Proteges of this generation were still just called the Protege, but everyone kinda knows this generation as the Protege 5, which is why I keep calling it that. And plus, the five-door wagon is probably the coolest option they have. The base model was offered with a bunch of different engine options, including a 1.5 liter inline four, a 1.8 liter inline four, and most importantly, the two liter inline four, which made a very respectful 130 30 horsepower going to, of course, the front wheels. And now you may be scratching your head as to why I hyped this car up so much if it only has 10 more horsepower than a damn Mazda Miata, but the reason is because the car also weighed only 2,600 pounds, which is only 400 pounds more than the Miata. And since this is a sedan, you do some quick rate reduction in the back, and you can easily get this car to down to at least 2,300 pounds. So the horsepower really starts to shine. Take it from me. I've always been the kind of guy that looks at horsepower numbers and thinks that's what makes or breaks a car too, until I brought my Integra. It is so much more fun to drive a slow car fast than drive a fast car slow, and that's exactly what you're going to do with the Protege. Also, in 2001, they decided this was not enough, and the car needed to be truly sporty. So they introduced us the wonderful MP3 trim level, which massively tuned the suspension to make it stiffer, added 10 more horsepower by simply tuning the ECU, bringing the total number up to 140 horsepower, and they even gave it a new cat-back exhaust system to really let that mother trucking equine flow. That's fancy talk for horses. Now, if you're a keen viewer, you will have noticed that before I said the base model came with a two liter, so you've been patiently waiting for the sports model to shine. Well, here it is, friend. Say hello to the Mazda Speed Protege.
That's right, Franklin. Just like every other company on Earth, Mazda has an in-house tuning program where they make some of the most enjoyable cars to come from their company. The most popular of these are obviously the Mazda Speed 3 and the Mazda Speed 6, but they have given cars like the Miata and of course the Protégé the Mazda Speed package before too, and they go completely under the radar. And before you think to yourself, well, they probably just stiffened up the suspension and called it a whole new car, you're wrong. They gave the gosh darn Protégé a wonderful turbo Herbo Burbo Boy, pushing the horsepower all the way up to, from 130 in the base model to a whopping 170 horsepower in the Mazda Speed variant. That's a massive jump when once again you consider the weight and what the car was built for in the first place. On top of the horsepower increase, they also gave the car bigger wheels, even stiffer suspension, bigger brakes, and most importantly for all of us racers out there, a beautiful looking aero kit. Overall, the Mazda Protégé 5, or the ninth generation of the Mata Pro Mazda Protégé line, was a pretty big success. However, after the long reign of terror that the Protégé had on the economy sedan market, even introducing the wonderful Mazda Speed Protégé could not prolong the inevitable anymore. Sadly, after the last of the ninth gen Protégé rolled off the assembly line in 2003, they discontinued this little car and we have not seen the name since. Before you start to say that's because the car wasn't doing good anymore, you're wrong. The world during the mid-2000s was making a massive change from daily driver sedans to daily driver hatchbacks, and so even though the Protégé was still selling decently well, Mazda decided to put more time and effort into making the Mazda 3 or CX SUVs sell better since they knew that the future for their company lied in those cars' hands or wheels. So yes, it does suck that right when the Protégé was finally becoming something cool for the car community, they killed it, but it does make sense when you think about it. Cars like the RX-7, Supra, GTR, were never built to just make the company money, and that's why people got mad when they discontinued those cars. But the Protégé was built just to sell well, so the average folk could buy one. When Mazda finds a better money-making method, it does make sense why they would go for that change, even if it does make me incredibly frustrated. No, 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 no! Everyone! Now, the point on me making this video was not to sell you on the Protégé. A good 90% of you watching this will probably be very disappointed by the car's performance if you get in it. The whole point was just to maybe open your mind a little bit on yet another forgotten tuner car of the 90s, 2000s era that was sadly outnumbered by the rain that the Civic had. Because even though in today's car scene, everybody tells you you need to be making 800 horsepower and be able to beat Hellcats at the drag strip, for us who find clipping the apex and destroying back roads with your buddies more fun, the Protégé is honestly an amazing example of a cheap little toge monster that hasn't fallen victim to the dreaded JDM tax yet. And I don't know about you, but to me, that is what makes the Mazda Protégé 5 so great. on the wonderful Mazda Protégé. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. I really want to start getting into the deep dives a little bit more recently. Finally got enough time to do it. I've been going on like vacations the past month. I went on three. Three of my weekends were taken up, so I didn't have the weekends to write out the scripts for the deep dives. And the scripts for the deep dives are very long and they take a long time to make them. So I didn't have any time to do them. But now we're back. We're going to be writing out the scripts more often, hopefully getting a lot more deep dives out there. A lot of you guys seem to like them, so that's great news, but I just keep slacking on it. But either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Let me know what other cars you'd like to see a deep dive on. And Daspadania, have a nice night. Oh.